the greatest story ever told folks not only was it a great story but it wasn't it's non-fiction folks thank you that jesus came into the world to save sinners see folks that is the greatest story ever told that god knowing that man was in their sin and hopeless helpless without the lord jesus christ he came to die for sinners folks that was the purpose of the cross that was the purpose of his birth to come into the world to save sinners and folks the world has turned uh, into a mess in the beginning was the word in the word was with god and the word was god And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That means God dwelt with us, folks, in the flesh. He was conceived of a virgin. And the angel called him Jesus because he came to save men from their sins. But the world has rejected him. They've rejected him even though he's the only one that could save you he's the only one that could take away your sin and that's really the most important thing to know about the lord jesus today is that he could take away your sin and it's your sin that will keep you from the kingdom of god but jesus is not willing that any should perish all should come to repentance the greatest story ever told is that jesus came into the world to save sinners. A baby came and then 33 years later they crucified him on a cross because they didn't believe that God sent him to die for their sins and to be the Savior of the world, the Messiah. And everything that you see happening in the world today is a direct result of sin in the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men but that was the reason God came in the flesh to die for sinners he shed his own blood for sinners so that they could have eternal life he became flesh and dwelt among us see that separates Christianity from any other religion in the in the in the world because they all have their saviors they all have their their leaders but they don't it, they don't have a God that actually became a man to take their place for their sins. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And remember that this year, folks, because it's not too late. Satan has deceived the world and blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the gospel should shine unto them. So that's what the devil does. He tries to blind men from their sins. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He shed his own blood. And that was the purpose of the cross, folks. That was the purpose of Jesus Christ going to that cross because he became a sacrifice for sins. He became a sacrifice for sins because there's nothing else in this world that could take away sins but the blood of Jesus. There you go. It's free. Thank you. Hey, you want one? There you go. You're welcome. So, folks, today, don't forget that God made a way for you to have eternal life. He made a way for you to have eternal life. He sent His only begotten Son that whoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So today, folks, remember the Lord Jesus. Remember that He died for your sins. What shall it profit a man he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. So God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance.
Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come unto the Father but by me. See, the Word of God says that for so God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So that's the gift of God. It was a free gift given by God to those that be would believe. But today, most of our nation, they're stripping that good news away from us. The greatest story ever told that Jesus came to die for sinners. And that's not only the greatest story ever told, it's the greatest news for today. That you could have eternal life. That, that you know, man was made in the image of God. In the beginning, God created all things. But then when you move to John, it says, in the beginning was the Word. And you know why uh, God said in the beginning was the Word? Because the Word is living. Jesus is living. Eternal life is living. Life is a, a continuous cycle, folks. But not all men will enter into the Kingdom of God because they have not trusted in the Savior Jesus Christ. They did not believe that He was uh, manifest in the flesh and He came to dwell among men. But the Lord Jesus Christ... He came because He loved man. It said He commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But that's why Jesus Christ came into the world, folks, to save sinners. Because sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. And because sin passed upon all men, we need a Savior, folks, and that Savior is Jesus Christ. He did not leave the world without, without hope, folks. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us that hope of eternal life. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world and the wickedness that's going on in the world because that's a result of sin. What's going on in the world today is a result of sin, but more than 2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God, He solved that problem if men will believe. That's what the crucifixion is all about, folks. The death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about today. It's about Jesus Christ coming to this world to save sinners. That's what we are, folks. We're fallen. We need to be reconciled to God by the death of His Son. It says that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. We're reconciled to God by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Not a, a Eucharist or not a, a confessing your sins to a man. But when you're born again, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus Christ says that He gives you His Spirit. And that's what separates us, folks. That's what separates us Christians from all the world because we're not saved because we belong to a religion or a denomination. We're, we're saved because we believe on the Savior, Jesus Christ, who was God in the flesh. It wasn't just some man... Uh, that came here to do good things. He was actually God that came here and took on the body of a man. He came here as a baby, but then he came to reveal himself after he was like 33 years old and they rejected him. And the Word of God says, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So, so, even though He came to this earth and they rejected Him, those that believe, that bridges the gap for all of mankind, folks. For the vilest, wickedest sinner to be saved. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. See, folks, and this is the condemnation 
that light came into the world. Do you know who that light was? That light was Jesus Christ. That light, God sent the light into the world, but men rejected that light. And more than 2,000 years later, they're still rejecting the light, folks. They're still rejecting that light today. But you don't have to be one that rejects that light, folks. You don't have to be that one that rejects the light because He came a light into darkness. And that's what we are in this world. We're, we're in darkness and we need, we need salvation because of sin. The Word of God says there is none righteous. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. By nature, folks, men are not seeking after God. By nature, men are not seeking after God because that's the nature of man. That's what sin does to men. Sin has separated. Sin has separated man from God. That's why Jesus Christ had to come to die for sinners, folks. That's that's the gift. You know, God talks about a free gift that He gave to men. He talks about a free gift. That's what eternal life is. That's the gift of God. The Word of God says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So God is not willing that any should perish I mean, that's God's love, folks, because sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. That's why we experience death. That's why you experience the things that we're reading about in the news because the Word of God says that it will be just as in the days of Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man be. Because that's what happened in the days of Noah. God. Uh, destroyed the earth with a flood because men became vain in their imaginations. They, they forgot about God. They forgot about that He created man on this earth and they went astray. And the Word of God says that their imaginations were only evil before God. Their imaginations were evil and the earth was corrupt before God. And violence, violence filled the earth just like it's today folks but you could have peace in the Lord Jesus because he came to give peace he came to give peace onto this onto this earth that's what the that was the news of the gospel folks the news of the gospel was that you know that was the glad tidings that the angels brought they said peace on earth and goodwill to men. But is there peace on earth today? No, there's no peace because men in our nation especially are rejecting the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're, they're rejecting the Gospel. They've rejected it since the day Jesus came here because they were intimidated by the God-man that came. They were intimidated by Him. They were intimidated because they they um, rendered him an imposter, but he was the Savior. He was God in the flesh. He became sin for us who knew no sin. That's right, the Lord Jesus Christ, he lived this life without sin because he wasn't a, a man like me and you. He, was, he wasn't a man like me and you. He was God in the flesh. God in the flesh, folks. And, and since the beginning of time, God made a way so that we could all enter into His kingdom, have peace, have our sins forgiven, have our sins blotted out. We could have our sins blotted out, folks, because that's the only thing that will keep you from heaven. That's the only thing that will keep you from God is your sin. But you can have eternal life today if you will trust in the living God, Jesus. The living God, they crucified Him, but more than 20, 2,000 years later, you still could have eternal life. And uh, folks, while the rest of the world's rejecting the kingdom of God, you don't have to do that today. You could, 
receive it. Don't be like the people that Jesus came to and he and they received him not. But to, to them that received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. So that's what you need to do today, folks. You don't need religion today. You don't need to be part of a denomination. You need to become a son of God. You need to be born again. That's what Jesus said when he was on this earth. When he came to this earth, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And why do you have to be a born again? You need to be born of the Spirit of God because we're fallen by nature by nature we're fallen the word of god says there is none righteous no not one all have sinned and come short of the glory of god but jesus christ came to die for sinners and he says he's not willing in his word he said he's not willing that any perish but that all should come to repentance